We have all heard of the U.S. government's UFO cover-ups, but no one can imagine the extent to which it is willing to go to discredit and silence an American citizen who found the truth everyone was hiding. Paul Benowitz knew too much, and while his story is unthinkable, it is shockingly true. Brace yourself as we delve into the outrageous story of how the government drove Paul to the brink of madness. Paul Benowitz was a brilliant electrical engineer from Albuquerque, New Mexico. After finishing his Ph.D. in physics, he started his own business called Thunder Scientific, which is still in business today, making instruments for gauging humidity and temperature. He worked closely with the Air Force and NASA, bringing him physically closer to Kirtland Air Force Base, but he never thought that relocating there would change his life forever. On the night of August 14, 1980, Paul observed some interesting lights in the sky near his home. That incident sparked his interest in the concept of extraterrestrial life. And in the late 1970s, he joined the Aerial Phenomena Research Organization, or APRO, and even served as a scientific consultant. But his obsession with UFOs only grew with time, encouraging him to learn and investigate more about these unidentified flying objects. At one point, he took his findings to the federal government through Air Force intelligence, but that turned out to be the biggest mistake of his life. Benowitz was convinced he had stumbled upon a major conspiracy involving aliens and high-tech spacecraft. He was confident extraterrestrials had established their base in and around the Kirtland Air Force Base and used this airspace as a staging area for their activities. In his fixation with UFOs, Benowitz presented several photographs he had taken of the alien craft and showed them to the government officials. However, the U.S. government wasn't happy with what he had discovered on his own and decided to target him over the next few years and systematically destroy him. It all began on that fateful night in August, when Benowitz saw unusual lights while on an evening ride with a New Mexico state trooper, Gabe Valdez. He returned more than once to take pictures of where they had gone and see what was up there during the daytime. The last time he went there with his son, and when they came home, his wife stated there had been humming noises over their house the night before. What do you think was creating that sound? Here's an interesting fact about where he saw the mysterious lights. It was in Dulce, New Mexico, where there are claims of an underground alien base. What are the odds of that? Paul didn't live too far from Kirtland Air Force Base, so he set up a camera on his rooftop to watch the lights in the sky, taking still photos and video footage. And can you guess what he captured? The answer will blow your mind. Around 1980, he caught a couple of UFOs that looked like discs flying in and out of Manzano weapons storage, which was close to the Air Force base. And if seeing flying discs once wasn't enough, he caught them around the same area over a period of days. Benowitz was determined to get to the bottom of what was happening at the airbase, so he set up nighttime surveillance cameras and tried to film any aerial activity with the help of his telephoto lenses. He believed the flashing lights had an extraterrestrial origin and were not part of the base's activities. In the year that followed, he aimed other instruments at the site and began detecting electromagnetic pulses, which he thought were being emitted by the UFOs he was filming. He was shocked by the lack of reaction from anyone stationed around Kirtland Air Force Base. But Benowitz was convinced that the base was under attack and decided to reach out to the government. Interestingly, Benowitz was allowed to speak with the heads of every department at Kirtland Air Force Base. After a few meetings, he was introduced to Special Agent Richard Doty of the U.S. Air Force Office of Special Investigations. Benowitz was excited to meet high-ranking officials because that, in a way, validated the seriousness of the situation. But he didn't know that it was all a sham. I don't let it bother me. I did initially. Uh, I don't really let it uh, get to me. I went from having a concern about it to not really caring about it to what you just said, I'd be getting a kick out of it now. Did you ever come to a UFO conference while working? Yes. A as an assignment? Yes. He was led to believe that Doty would be his liaison and was encouraged to continue his investigation, when in fact, Doty had already begun a disinformation campaign against the UFO community. Doty brought another investigator, Bill Moore, into the picture and began passing Benowitz false information through him. Moore showed Benowitz official documents that had been planted intentionally by Doty, and that's how he began going down a rabbit hole, thinking that major agencies like NASA were interested in his research and taking it seriously. Doty made Benowitz believe that he could build a device that would allow him to communicate with the aliens. 
He made low-frequency receivers to receive electromagnetic transmissions from alien crafts. You have been the UFO boogeyman for at least 25 years, maybe longer. At least 25 years. I, I, does part of you get a kick out of that a little bit? I don't let it bother me. I did initially. And when Paul began receiving messages, Doty and Moore confirmed they were sent from extraterrestrials, when in reality the NSA had purchased a home across the street from him and was beaming signals directly to his reception arrays. It really was an eureka moment for Benowitz, who thought he was deciphering alien transmissions. He began receiving messages like, Our race is dying on the home planet. Women of Earth are needed, and uh, the U.S. military has delivered embryos. He thought all of it was real because everyone had convinced him of it. Doty went as far as setting up a stage for an alien base in the Arculeta Mesa area near Dulce, New Mexico. We don't want him to go out to the public, go on camera and say, hey, I just tapped into a secret laser on Kirtland Air Force Base. Obviously, we can't have that happen. So all I had to do was say, well, you know what, Pa? Maybe what you did see was UFOs. From stationing military personnel around the site to conducting exercises on the base, they acted as if the special forces had been sent to guard a secretive base, all for Benowitz's benefit. But why would the government spend millions of dollars to fool the electrical engineer who was only trying to be a good American? What had he stumbled upon that the government wanted to destroy his credibility and mental stability completely? By the late 80s, Doty and Moore ceased their psychological campaign against Benowitz, but it was too late by then. Paul was confident he had uncovered a massive conspiracy. Still, when he revealed his findings, he was labeled a lunatic and a security risk by the same government that had encouraged him to pursue his investigation. That marked the end of Paul's connection with the government's inner circle. He was isolated, with only his conspiracy theories to keep him company. He became paranoid and delusional, speaking incoherently at times. Although Benowitz understood to some extent that his mental state was deteriorating due to the actions of Doty and Moore, he was too unstable to snap out of it. He began to keep guns and knives all around his house and even installed extra locks on his doors. Benowitz feared the aliens were after him and would come in through the walls at night to inject a chemical into his body that would keep him unconscious for hours. His health began failing and he lost a lot of weight. The last nail in the coffin came when he accused his wife of being an alien spy. That's when he was finally put away in a mental hospital. Why do you think the government went to such an extent to discredit and destroy Benowitz? When he captured those flying discs on camera, he took them straight to the Air Force base without any intentions of going to the media. The government could have simply confiscated his evidence and asked him to remain silent. It wouldn't be the first time they would do that. But it looks like they wanted to teach him and other ufologists like him a lesson. What do you think of Paul Benowitz's story? Did he deserve what he got? Let us know your opinions in the comments below. Remember to hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and press the notification bell for more videos.